cloud. Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group and let's take a look at the agenda for today. So this is what I've got. Is this um, readable enough for everyone on your screens? I'm using a tiny size screen and I'm not sure what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah, looks good to me. Great. All right, super. So what we'll do is we'll review the open action items. Uh, Oleg had, at, had suggested we might put a quality outreach program topic on. Um, I would hold that if he's here and leave it. If he's not, we can talk briefly about it. Uh, but then adopt open JDK for Docker on Debian. Retirement plan for stretch is the topic. Uh, what other topics would you like to add to the agenda? Jim, I believe you had one with regard to simplified labeling. Uh, yeah, Mark, I was actually just unmuting myself. Uh, yeah, simplified uh, labeling. Uh, I actually got down my action items, so uh, I need people to review the PR. But we can talk about that. When okay. It comes out. Oh, good. It's in. Okay, I see it. Great. All right. Any other topics? So, Alex, any topics from you? Uh, no. Not today. Gareth, I suspect we need to talk about Windows and uh, Docker images for Windows Docker images for um, LTSC 2019. Yep, sure. Okay, great. All right. Any other topics? Okay, then Sir, let's proceed. Hello. Oh, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Vivek. Sir, can you add a topic for Docker file in detail a little bit? Sure, sure. So, um, Uh, is this a discussion about its structure or what, what's, what's the topic? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, uh, by, uh, by taking one example, you can show me the Docker file, how to go. Oh, okay. all right, sure. All right, so Docker file content tut tutoring for Vivek. Okay, good. Yes, let's, let's put that there, okay. Anything else? Okay, then let's go ahead. So I still have the action item for the JET for Docker operating system support and platform selection. I did the sampling of the data um, for uh, the Docker image. So for the controller image, the various agents, and those samples told us that um, we are relatively okay right now for operating system support. The big gaps or the big uh, danger zones are Doc or Debian 9. Uh, ends, end of life is coming in 2021. And we've got some outdated uh, Java version on the Debian 9 image. It's uh, JDK 8U 242 instead of 272. So the proposal will be to, and I think I mentioned it here, that the proposal is that we are on, we run the current uh, JDK on each image and we want to run the, let me put it in the list here, proposal. Current JDK on each image and loss of a current JDK support drop, would officially drop the platform and a supported or platform supports, no, let's say it specifically operating system supports security patches still.
So that would cause Debian 9 to automatically drop early next year when they stop security patching it. Any questions there on that action item? And I suspect I'm still one to two weeks away from getting that submitted as a JEP. Okay, Alex, we had a topic, investigate CentOS options for adopt. Yeah, so I, I looked at this because we're currently just using the M repository um, directly uh, that comes, uh, or that's directly forced into us and it's using just OpenJDK. Um, so if we want to make sure that we're using the same version on all images, um, we would need to um, update the install and use the <clears throat> adopt OpenJDK YAM repository, which I can put together VR for. And now does does adopt provide a YAM repository? Or we would just install it as a gzip as a tar file? Um, I they do have a YAM repository, so we can do either method. Okay. I guess we should probably start using Adoptium instead of adopt open JDK, but it's not a big deal. All right, great. Because they changed their name. Oh, right, right, exactly. Sorry, I should, I should use the correct name, Adoptium. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from others on the CentOS plan? Looks good. Okay. All right, next topic was Alex submit a pull request with a deprecation notice for install plugins.sh. Yeah, that's been done. It was merged. Oh, and, and actually I should report on that. The uh, plugin installation manager tool is now used for, um, for the the standard install instructions. It's also used in the uh, all the Windows controller images. There's no um, install plugin script. It's just the plugin installation manager tool. Oh, this, uh, I missed it, Alex. Where is it new, used also? The Windows controller images. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Windows controller images. It's also used in the tutorial, the build tools tutorials. Very good. Okay. It uh, raises importance of uh, fixing uh, the remaining regressions in plugin installation manager because oh. uh, there are bugs in this tool. Uh, and they essentially become uh, it becomes official once we ship LTS with uh, this version. Uh, it might. Uh, lead to some problems. So, and are those bugs worse than the limitations of install plugins.sh or, or just critically impacting the, or critically impacting because they No, uh, critically issues have been fixed. So there is uh, one issue with uh, determining uh, the target version property because in some conditions, uh, plugin installation manager uh, um, selects a wrong version uh, for installation and it pulls uh, dependencies from wrong version. So basically you may end up with uh, the desired plugin set. Thank you, thanks for the clarity. Okay, and pull dependencies from the wrong version. Yeah, so how important is it? Uh, well, the users, uh, who are running uh, install plugins SSH, they will get different behavior in some cases. So, for example, uh, the issue 193, which is still open, I guess. Yep, and, uh, Tim uh, has assigned it to himself, uh, but yeah, it's still there, there. Thank you. So, should we? Is there, a, is there a reason for us to delay further the, the, the widespread use of plugin installation manager or rather we just accept that we need to, if, that we continue with issue 193 open and hope that- I would recommend uh, to at least have opt-out option. 
So if users are unhappy with uh, how plugin installation manager tool works, they can switch uh, to um, install plugin SSH. The downside is that uh, yeah, no, plugin installation manager tool doesn't uh, fully verify the dependency tree. So it means that uh, in some conditions you may end up with a uh, broken Jenkins instance or starting up. So if you change the default beh behavior of install plugins is uh, age. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much Oleg for that clarification. So it might result in a broken Jenkins install. Mm -hmm. uh, great. No, not great. But yeah. Well, right. Thank you. Okay. I'm just raising a flag so that uh, the team is careful with updating the version. Sorry, I was unable to follow um, Docker image at all. Well, uh, and it's important important point that you know that may lobby that we should not add we should not obsolete install bash plugins.sh until we're, we're we have more confidence that all the use cases are covered well enough with plugin installation manager it, we may make plugin installation manager the preferred choice but better that it we use we have it still available to use install bash plugins.sh great mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I had the action item. Oh, anything else on uh, install plugins.sh, Alex or Oleg? Nope. No. Oh, actually, yes. One more thing. <clears throat> As part of that deprecation, we did remove the old, old plugins.sh. Um, it was used a long time ago. That has been removed. It was marked deprecated for some time. It's now been removed. And have we seen any any um, con shouting, outrage, or concern? Um, red no. flags raised. Okay. Yeah, this script was deprecated in 2015 or 16. Uh, it hasn't been really updated for a while. So I don't think that there are any legitimate usages at the moment. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. So anything else on plugins.sh or install dash plugins.sh? Okay, next topic then. Mark has, uh, I have the op action item to prep a, pull, a blog post on plugin installation manager and update center, still pending. Um, I'm delighted with the with the results we've got, with the number of places we're using it, uh, it's likely, uh, not likely for one to two weeks at least. Due to other, other load and, and holiday time. Uh, if someone else feels like they would like to take that instead, I could pass it to them. Otherwise, I'm just going to get to it as I can. Maybe for these topics, it makes sense to create uh, tickets, for example, on uh, Jenkins IO, so that somebody else could potentially pick them up. Uh, mm. But yeah, it's, hmm, I'm not sure that it's uh, that efficient. It's a good suggestion. I, I think it's it's an interesting one to allow allow others to. Uh, yeah, good. I like that. Jim, you want to take us through um, re refinements for parallelization and multi-arch? Uh, yep. Uh, I've been working on APR for the last couple of weeks. Um, I actually just submitted it uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, the PR rewrites um, some of the build scripts. Um, yeah, the, the build images, uh, build tags, and build uh, manifests. Uh, and then you have a wrapper around those three scripts. 
the wrapper is really utilized for CI, CD implementations. It's pretty easy. You just say, hey, I want to build Debian uh, images, and it will handle all the tagging, all the you know, verbose tagging, scanning the Docker, um, scan the repo for Docker files, uh, and doing all that for you. It's pretty simple to use. And I have documentation in the CI folder uh, that kind of goes over each script, the parameters that uh, you can pass in, and a couple of examples. Okay, excellent, thank you. And you say this was submitted just a day or two ago, so it needs, needs review and yeah. assessment. Now, does yeah. that include the new tagging, the new tagging, the clearer, simpler tagging proposal that you had been talking about? Uh, yes, yes, it does. Uh, it includes the verbose tagging and then keeping pretty much all the same tags that you guys offer right now. Uh, I mentioned this in the PR. The only tag I didn't carry over was uh, Slim. Uh, I opted more for just uh, clarifying it's Debian Slim. Um, so, you know, you can see the difference, um, but it's easy enough just to go in there and, uh, add in slim. Uh, it's just one if statement that I need to add in if we want that. Um, yeah, the, the only other thing I would need help from Alex probably, um, on the parallelization, I did not touch the Jenkins file as I'm not really that, um, verse in, um, groovy uh that much uh so i would need uh, some help uh kind of uh adding the parallelization to the jenkins file and pointing to the right scripts to call um and i, I mentioned these two points in the the pr uh as places i need help uh to kind of finish up the pr excellent thank you so alex any any insights that you want to share with regard to the Verbose tagging. I believe you and Jim have worked together on this. Are there incompatibilities other than the Debian, the slim to Debian slim transition that it introduces? I, Jim has done all the work. Um, I, I've done some talking through things on Gitter and stuff. I, I need to review the PR still. So I'll do that today. Okay. Uh, there shouldn't be any incompatibilities. I, I tested it pretty well. Um, it's just the, the only tag that doesn't exist or carried over or the, um, the slim tags. Um, can, can you add the, um, the Docker Hub repository you're pushing to just to, so we can review that as well? Can you add that to these notes? So the Docker Hub destination repository, is that what you're saying? But I think you've been testing pushing to a, a, like a personal Docker Hub. Is that right, Jim? Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I can add that in um, uh, the, the PR so you guys can take a look at that. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, and now will this will this alter how we do um, how we do our actual our production builds? I assume it will. Uh, yes, yes, it will. And and does it I assume it continues the the Push to Jenkins for eval of the S390X image, the PowerPC image. Is it also pushing an ARM image? Uh, yes. The, these, uh, so the scripts, you can run images and tags, uh, the, the published images, published tags on, well, they need to be run on Arch uh, to generate the S390 ARM or power images. Uh, the manifests uh, uh, can be run on any arch, actually constructing the, the manifest, because for manifest, you're just pulling down uh, all the images. They don't actually need to be ran or anything like that. I think technically tagging, you don't need to run on a different arch too, but um, yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, so, and just for my benefit then, so target architectures that we're talking about right now, there's AMD 64, uh, S390X, um, ARM 64, mm -hmm. PowerPC 64. Have I missed one? Uh, no, the, those, are the, those are the four uh, I target. 
And just to note, uh, I did not touch, um, just kind of like how the, the, the build scripture before, I did not touch uh, the Windows images. I kind of left those separate. Uh... Okay, but, but that is currently separate. Okay, yeah. and that's a good one for, for Gareth to, to sh report for us on how his progress is going there. Um, I'm not sure what it would mean. Yeah, because don't I, do I remember correctly that the Windows images are generated from PowerShell scripts, not really from make files? Correct. So the, the Windows, um, I believe, already matches the tagging that um, Jim is proposing for the mm -hmm. next site images. So oh. I think we're OK in terms of the naming and the tagging there. But it could use a review. Uh, another feature I did add in uh, that might be of interest to you guys um, from seeing the email chains um, on, on Docker Hub is new limitations and stuff like that. Um, I know, I think you guys got sponsoring, right? For, for Docker Hub? Yes. It's called us. Okay, sweet. Uh, the one thing I did add was there is an environment variable. I, mean, I mentioned this in the PR. You, go, you can actually override uh changing the the image repository you guys push to so if you ever want to uh start publishing for multiple um repositories like quay.io or uh github's uh docker repository uh that is possible with scripts too excellent okay Whoops, it would help if I spelled correctly. Great. All right. Any anything else on that action item then? Uh, nope. Now, Oleg, you mentioned multi-arch image supporting custom war packager. Did you want to give us an overview of that? That's yeah, it's just a related thing. So Rick uh, today submitted a pull request yesterday, which allows uh, building multi-platform images uh, with custom of packager. So now uh, once you have a base image, which supports uh, multiple platforms, you can uh, build a custom image, uh, which would also support these platforms. Basically that's it. So, so that would conceptually then that would allow custom war packager to be used to build an S390X or an ARM-based um, custom war packaged for, a, for, for that specific architecture. Exactly. Okay, so it allows the user to combine controller and uh, plugins into a custom war that is platform What would we say? Generated specific is is focused is targeting a platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, you can uh, add additional parameters uh, to custom or package definition, and it will uh, build uh, for this uh, architectures. That's it. You can open pull request uh, there are examples and um, a demo edited by Rick. So it's not strictly related to this story, but well, I guess it's contribute to the overall yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, that, that seems very nice. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Jim, anything else on on uh, the topic for parallelization and improvements in CI? Uh, nope, just need some reviews. Uh, make sure that there's no issues. Great. Thank you. All right, next topic, Oracle JDK Quality Outreach Program. Oleg? Um, yeah, uh, so a few weeks ago, uh, the Oracle team, OpenJDK Jigsaw team, uh, reached out to me to check uh, the status of our uh, quality outreach membership. 
So just to clarify, um, KK added uh, the Jenkins project to quality outreach when we were doing the Java 10 plus support hackathon. So it was 2017 and 2018. Um, we had uh, quite productive discussions with uh, OpenGL KGXO team at that moment. We basically were able to support Java 10, then Java 11. But uh, we haven't been really active uh, with regards to supporting the higher Java versions. And this topic uh, might become um, actual uh, when uh, the new Java LCS is released. So far, the plan is that it's still be Java 17. So half, half a year from now, we should be able to test uh, the upcoming LCS. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The problem with that, uh, basically, what's uh, quality outreach team uh, raises is that uh, we, as a project, we haven't been really active in quality outreach program. So there are some expectations and there are some benefits. We haven't been using any benefits like direct access to OpenGDK team, uh, troubleshooting of uh, regressions, etc. And at the same time, we also do not contribute to this program because we expected to provide uh, testing results. Uh, we expect to validate release candidates um, and uh, final versions and uh, eventually to provide support. So we are doing none of that. And hence, uh, there was a pretty valid question as whether the Jenkins project wants to remain in the program. And, and I think, at least as I consider that, I don't think we should remain in the program because we're not contributing towards it. Um, do you have a strong opinion one way or the other, Oleg? So for me, uh, concern is uh, the next uh, Java uh, LCS version. What we currently see is that the adoption of Java 11 is extremely slow. And even if uh, there was uh, Java 17 or Java whatever LTS on the market, I'm not sure which percent of our user base would realistically move there. So we could uh, greatly increase adoption by making Java 11 by default in the Jenkins project. But uh, even in 2020, it still looks like a nuclear option. Um, so, yeah, um, does it make sense to support uh, Java 17? Probably yes. But it means that we would be supporting three LCS baselines. Uh, you would need someone to actually add support, add testing. You would need to create uh, CI/CD pipelines, increase uh, cost of uh, all testing uh, across the CI Jenkins I/O organization. And if it uh, happens like with Java 11, when you have less than 2% of users running this version, um, I'm not sure what's the point. Yeah, that, and that's, I think you've got a, an excellent question there is, what would, what would compel us to use Java 17, to make Java 17 supported with the increased costs that go with that when, when low adoption is probably predictable? Yeah, well, Java evolves uh, new features, really improve performance, uh, they really improve uh, stability of Java. Um, so there is a reason to update. For example, we run CI Jenkins IO on Java 11. And uh, if you're using uh, newer versions, we would have even better garbage collector. We would have even better diagnostics tools. So in principle, it makes sense to update, especially if you run your own service and when the uh, cost of operating this service uh, is something important to you. But if uh, you ship on-premise versions so that others run, it uh, basically others, yeah. If uh, performance of Jenkins is 10% better on uh, uh, Java 11, uh, I'm not sure that uh, many users uh, would uh, upgrade because 10% isn't uh, noticeable for them. I see, okay, right. Mm -hmm. So for service provider, 10% is quite visible for end users, especially running on on-premise. Yeah. And yeah, this 10%, I, yeah, I just made up a number, but yeah, 
the principle that uh, while there is considerable improvement, um, it's still uh, not a point for instances which just work at the moment. Right. It doesn't. It's it's not likely to be enough that they would detect dramatic changes and say, "Oh, wow, this is perceivably better for me as an individual user." Got mm -hmm. it. I think I understand your point. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I wanted to discuss it in the platform seek because yeah, although supporting Java 11 is interesting in principle, for example, official support for ARM and for other platforms uh, seems to be much higher on priority list. And and that's a that's a good point. For example, we've got we can't fundamentally support the adopt Open JDK JDK 8 on system 390Z because it doesn't use just-in-time compilation, but Java 11 does use it and, and is great. It's so that it, it, you've got a good point that there is a, there's a motivation on S390Z and other places that Java 11 just behaves better. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Anything else, Oleg? Should we mm -hmm. should we call for a decision here? Call for it because I think I think we've got the right people on the call to decide if we should if we should continue being part of the quality outreach program and just then give them an, an the answer accordingly. Would would that be okay, or do we need the governance board to to get involved in that? I don't think the governance board was involved in the initial joining of it. I'm not sure that the governance board is needed because firstly we have support for modern Java versions on our roadmap. But I guess it's common sense that if somebody wants to contribute, uh, yes, of course, let's do that. Uh, the problem is whether somebody wants to contribute. Uh, even when we were doing uh, Java 10, Java 11 support, yeah, we organized the hack fest. Um, we also used uh, other events. We had more than 30 contributors in total. Uh, but at the same time, uh, a significant part of uh, changes came uh, from Cloud Beast at that point. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure whether there will be investment in Java 17 support at the moment. I'm not a product management manager, I cannot say, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, and I do not expect to have a 17 investment from anybody that I know of. Except, except Oracle, maybe. Okay. Ah, all right, and, and they've expressed their interest, but, but again, the interest we got from Oracle was Oracle Cloud, not the Oracle Java team. So, so even they may not be that, that mm -hmm focused on Java 17 support. Good, okay. Right. So yeah, at some point I wanted to just poke uh, recent Java versions to see what are the obstacles, but I, I can confirm that Jenkins doesn't just work. So we will again go through all these JBoss marshalling, through uh, ASM updates with many potential regressions because we use ASM pretty much everywhere across the project. So, yeah, in principle, having, uh, let's say, a hack fest like we did in 2017 for Java 10 would be nice just to crunch and see what are the issues. Likely, uh, like for Java 11, many things will work out of the box after some patches. Uh, but still, it's, yeah, it requires time. Got it. Very good. All right. And, and that feels like we can do that independent of whether or not we're part of the Java Quality Outreach Program. Yeah, so Java Quality Outreach basically helps us to get support. Uh, but yeah, to do that, it should be a win-win. So it's not something like we are not uh, doing test automation, we are not uh, really helping uh, quality outreach team, but we request support, it would be quite unfair. Okay. So I think what I'd like to do is propose just a poll here of the of those in on the call. Um, 
say, should we remain members of Java Quality Outreach and increase, attempt to increase our efforts? And if so, who? Or should we step away from Java Quality Outreach and admit that we're not able to participate? Whoops, just a minute. I think if we're not actively participating, we should just step away. Mm -hmm. So for plus one from, from Mark to step away. Um, uh, and, and to, uh, I, I should state it differently, to officially state that we are dropping. Because I, I don't want, I don't want the Java quality outreach people to think that we're, we're somehow going to step up and do more or, uh, but rather let's just, let's step out. So Alex, I took that from plus one from you as well. Um, Oleg, your, your feeling? Plus one. Uh, we can uh, always return if needed. Okay. Uh, Jim, any objections from you? Uh, nope. Plus one. I, I agree with all. Like, we always can just come back if uh, we want to join and have time. All right. Any others that would like to voice their plus one or minus one? Okay. All right then that's, that's resolved, decided. Uh, Oleg, is that something you would notify them of? Do we need to notify yeah, them? Yeah, I can take an action item for that. Okay. Thank you. All right, anything else on, on Java Quality Outreach? Okay, next topic then, adopt OpenJDK for Docker on Debian. So this was one that Alex and I had taken on because right now we ship the OpenJDK image on our Debian, our most popular Debian distributions. Isn't that correct, Alex? Did I, do I remember that right? I think now we only do that on Stretch. I think on the Buster we are doing open, adopt OpenJDK, ah, but okay. I, I'd have ah. to double check. Good, so that's on, on Stretch, and Stretch is the one that is, is used for latest. Currently, yeah, and I think we decided not to um, do it for Stretch, just because we're going to be deprecating Stretch soon. Right, okay, it, switch. Yeah, I was gonna actually ask about that, because uh, the end of life of Stretch, uh, I think, kind of came uh, maybe not for LES, but the the basic versions. Uh, and I, I don't think Adopt OpenJDK or Adoptium uh, produces for Stretch. I think they moved on to Buster uh, for the LTS support. And I think that makes perfect sense. I don't think we should spend the energy. Let's spend the energy to to transitioning the latest label from debit from Stretch to Buster so that it gets on to a version that has another year or two of life at least. Yeah, so uh, any objections to, to that? So we just, we allow the stretch image to retire as its current configuration using OpenJDK and it's currently using OpenJDK 8U242 currently and it would just stay there until we obsolete it remains until stretch is obsolete or they upgrade JDK. They do the upgrade themselves inside the stretch base image. Is there a date we want to have set in mind for that? I think for me, it needs to be by, I would assume by March, 2021, seems like a likely release date for the next version stretch or the next Debian release of Bullseye, of Bullseye. And with that stretches is dead or stretches then unsupported completely. So for me, that would be, and sooner than that is better 
Now the, the March, March number, I checked if they were, had published an estimated date and the Debian project has not actually published an estimated date. They just say 2021. Does that answer your question, Jim? Uh, yep. Okay. All right. So I think I think that anything else on Adopt Open JDK for Docker on Debian? Alex, any any concerns there or places where ooh, this is this this is a bad plan, something like that? No, sounds good to me. Okay, all right. So retire. And so I th just to be sure, I think what that means is we will, the, the label latest will switch at some point in the future from stretch based to buster. That way, I mean, we can't, we can't continue supporting stretch after the operating system support for it has stopped security patches. We're not going to do them to Debian for sure. Uh, oh. Mark, if, if I'm not wrong, I thought the, the latest actually points to Buster right now. I, I, I don't it, it think hasn't so. for me when I ran we my have, test. We updated the uh, latest uh, to Buster um, yeah, this summer. Did we? Huh, that... At least four agents. I'm not 100% sure, uh, sure for controller images. Ah, for agents, uh, so... we updated uh, them when we were uh, cleaning up the terminology. At the same time, Alex submitted a pull request uh, for Buster, so it was also integrated. And later, we retrospectively added stretch back. But yeah, I believe that we migrated um, everything to Buster by default. Yeah, I, I, I'm reasonably confident that the controller images are still uh, are still shipping stretch, but I'll I'll have to double check. The Debian, so the like the make Debian in the make file is using the Buster directory. Huh, interesting because. At least I, I'm quite confident that my image that's derived from the LTS, uh, the LTS latest, so 2.249.3 dash LTS is in fact based on stretch. So um, all that we may, have, this may indicate that we've already solved our problem. I didn't realize that. I'll have to, I thought that when I ran my tests, I had, we had a quite, we had several operating systems, several tags that are still using uh, the stretch image, but I'll double check. Great, excellent, thank you. So that's, we've made more progress than I realized. That's really good. Okay, so next topic was retirement plan for Debian stretch in our Docker images. And I was a, I would like to do that just as part of the, the Docker platform support JEP. The thought was we declare inside that JEP uh, some rules, um, um, operating rules. And, and the operating rules that I was considering was support of an operating system ends when updating secure, upstream security fixes end, or when we have, and now this is one, I would like to suggest that we use an adopt, uh, adopt an image, image program, similar to the adopt a plugin program that we use. That's fine. And that we have the concept of maintainer for each image, uh, what I've seen is that I don't monitor the CentOS images, for instance, because they just aren't relevant to my use cases, but there are probably people who do. And so we would like, I think we need the concept of a maintainer for each image. And I believe that the GitHub code owners concept 
may help us there. I'm open to, to comments though, is that with uh, clearly communicating who's, who the image owners are or the image maintainers are. It should be good enough. Okay. All right, any, any objections to that, those, any of those concepts while I'm getting this JEP ready? No, I think I'm okay. Okay, great. All right, uh, submit the JEP, right, and submit the JEP. Great. Next topic, simplified labeling of Docker images, Jim. Um, yeah, so the, like I mentioned before, the PR has been submitted. Uh, the whole point of this is to add a couple more verbose tags. Uh, the idea is you publish the super verbose tags, uh, which include the JDK, JVM, OS uh, name, OS version, uh, Jenkins version. Um, yeah, I think that's actually it. Um, and you publish those and then you re-tag those with the, the tags you guys are all used to, like Slim, uh, Debian, Latest, LTS. Um, and basically that way, if someone needs a super specific image, uh, like if you want to pull like an OpenJ9 image, uh, where we don't have a super uh, simplistic tag for OpenJ9, uh, I would be able to pull down a super verbose tag uh, and still get the, the configuration I want. Um, and the, the new proposed scripts do all that, uh, plus keep all the tags except uh, the one I mentioned, Slim, uh, which that's an easy fix if uh, that is needed. Excellent. And now was that that PR just as you were describing it, that submitted to the to the controller? I assume it probably was not submitted to the that we'll do it on the controller first and then consider adding it to the various agents, or is that the, the agents don't particularly need this as much as the controller does? Um, I don't really use the agents that much, so I probably can't speak for that. Uh, but my assumption is the agents probably don't need it as much unless uh, there is a very big uh, case where, you know, the agent, you know, JDK, JVM, and OS actually matter um, a lot. Yeah, Oleg, you've got lots of experience with the agent images. Um, what's your sense there in terms of adoption or of, of operating system preferences? Do yeah, I think that for, for agents, we can uh, keep it simple for now. Okay. Yeah, so if you have a maintainer, uh, it's already a great start for agents. Um, all in active maintainers because right now we have a dozen of maintainers but all of them have so many other things to do and so i think that if somebody wants to step up and maintain a particular image for now we can just grant access uh, to all images and so be it great okay well and and i like that that's that has we, we can we could certainly use the controller naming pattern if someone says hey i need this support for this type of agent great mm -hmm. we can use the, the we can at least use the naming pattern that jim's created if we need it to be more verbose in the agent naming mm -hmm. uh i think uh oleg uh wasn't there a couple prs to the agents uh get have revo to kind of organize them uh into their folders like 8 11 and then like the os's and stuff like that yeah all of yeah. them have been already organized okay because the if and when you guys did want to uh do the verbose naming uh the scripts are written in a way where it scans those folders so as long as that like folder structure is the same on the controller or on the agents uh repos um the scripts should be pretty easy actually just to carry over a uh, slight modification, not a whole rewrite or anything like that, so. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent. Thank you very much for your work on that, Jim. Thank you, thank you. Anything else on simplified labeling of Docker images? Uh, no. 
Okay, next topic, Gareth, Windows Docker Images for LTSC 2019. Sure, yeah, um, not too much to update since uh, last week on this. So um, the Packer builds for 2019 LTSC will seem to be working nicely. Um, all those images have been published and uh, all of those Jenkins instances are updated and running with the updated um, images. They have um, some tests in them to validate Docker and that the disk size is correct, which is some common failures that we seem to have on those, which is, I think it's quite good. And Windows updates are installed as part of the build. Um, so then it's on to the Jenkins, so the actual Docker images. So adopt, we forked the adopt open JDK repo to add support for 2019 LTSC images. Uh, they're currently being published under the Jenkins for eval org until they can be sort of officially supported. And I think it's Alex's PR to be merged. Um, so that seems to be, they look like they're going in nicely. And then there's a PR for Jenkins to add 2019 LTSC as a sort of Docker variant. For that. That's where I'm up to. I think that's the I think that's the last PR, but it's it's yeah it's currently timing out on validating stuff. All right, so Jim, is that so the here I missed one that you said. So some tests of agent capability includes installation of oh um, Windows we, updates. So yeah, that's what, okay. All right, so so right now we're based on. A, a copy of Alex's PR that is being deployed into the Jenkins or in the Jenkins organization, we would eventually like Adoptium, Adopt Open JDK, to own that, just like they do the others. Uh, Alex, have you had any feedback from them on that PR? I've not seen any. Um, no, um, I know they have a problem with build machines. Like they, they don't have a lot of infrastructure for building windows, uh, Docker um, images. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how things, uh, how that will get resolved. Okay. So, I, so I think they're currently using, I think they're currently using GitHub Actions to build on the Windows ones because there is a Windows 2019 um, oh. runner. So if, when you fork the repo at the moment, it and, and modify the GitHub Actions files, it does actually build quite nice, um, those images. I'll, I'll ping them on that PR. They have it labeled as November 2020, so I don't know what that means. Great. So Gareth, can you give us give give us a next steps? We've got, we've still got uh, our we do we have images yet that are based on LTSC twenty nineteen? We've got more to come. So um, the next step is there's a, a Jenkins CI Docker um, pull request which I'll I'll pop in the chat. Um, that's the one that is currently timing out. Uh, I think it has a 60 minute timeout. And I think by adding the extra images on Windows, we need a bit more time on that. Oh, oh, okay, I see. So time's out after 60 minutes, but it's still actively building at the timeout. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that. No, I've watched it a few times. It is, it is it's definitely still doing stuff. Um, Okay, got it. I've, I've tried extending the time out, but uh, it doesn't have any effect for me when I push the change up. Uh, I, think, okay. I think that's a permissions piece. And Alex, any objections if we were to extend the time out for, a, or is that is that a time out that is system wide, no job on, on ci.jenkins.io is to, uh, to be allowed more than 60 minutes? No, it's in the Jenkins file. It, okay, it would so be so ideal if we could parallelize the Windows builds like we have for the Linux builds, but I just haven't had the time to look at it. Okay, great. All right. 
because we actually do build, um, we're building uh, eight images and testing them. So it, I think it's eight, I may be wrong on that. So it does take some time. So if we could parallelize that, it would be good. Great, okay. All right, anything else on the Windows Docker images topic then? Okay, last topic was Dockerfile content tutoring for Vivek. Vivek, what, what was what was what was your question? What was this? well? Or yeah, let's let's check to see. Vivek, is this something that needs just one-on-one -on -one contact, or that you'd like to talk with the platform special interest group as a whole? I fear we may have lost Vivek, huh? No, we did. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. All right. Given that, I think that stops us today. Any other topics we should bring to the group before we end the meeting? Okay. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your day. I'll post the recording. It will probably be several days. It won't be until next week when I'll likely post the recording. If needed, I can post a report, a recording because I have uh, other recordings to post. So it won't be a big deal for me. Oh, that would be, if, if that works for you, Oleg, that would be great. And if not, no problem. Yeah, I will do that. Thank you very much. Mm. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks all.